Okay, so next question. What would you say to someone trying to reach their dream goal, but friend and family or naysayers are causing them to doubt themselves? Mm. Do you want to go for it first, Raj? I couldn't help but think of immediately of a coaching question. I was like, I would love to go. speak to this person, you know? Mm -hmm, and, mm -hmm. and for me, I was curious as to, you know, why others opinion is so important. You know, what is coming up for this person? Why is this opinion important? Mm -hmm. Another question for, you know, I would be curious about, you know, what other areas in your life have other people's opinions held you back? So those are kind of coaching questions that were coming forward to me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I was also curious about, you know, it, it's, it can be easy to look at this just from coaching question, but I think about my own experience going into business for myself and being a coach. I had plenty of naysayers or people, um, even now there, there can still be a bit of a stigma or people are quite surprised or, you know, what does that look like for you? And I think, you do have to do that work on yourself in terms of your own self-trust and self-resilience. And I think when you're in a relationship or marriage or partnership, for me, we had to do a lot of designing the alliance when we moved to the States around the fact that I wasn't going to go back into a corporate career and this is something that I wanted to explore. And I messed up many times I would say I failed many times although my saying is there's no failure there's only feedback and there were times I had conversations with my spouse and you know and he was like it might be time for you to get a job and I had to keep believing in myself higher than anybody else could have believed in me at that point so it is there's all those things to think about and, you know, tool suggestions that I might give to people is even do a SWOT, you know, look at your strengths and your weaknesses and opportunities and threats in terms of a decision you're making, or if you're choosing to leave a career and go full time into coaching. I think one of the biggest pieces of resilience you have to build is within yourself first. Right. It's a thing. Uh, part of one, one of the reasons why uh, certain educators have moved away from grit and have embraced resilience is this idea that grit gave the impression that being successful rested entirely within the person. Like somehow we just need to grit it out. It's, it's a character trait or flaw. And there were students who had very little support at home and had faced incredible challenges uh, and to tell them that they needed to somehow find a gritty characteristic and it was their fault if they didn't succeed was unfair and unkind the strength and support of a network around you definitely plays a role in your strength of resilience people with more resources to tap into are simply more resilient and that's not fair but it's, it shows up. So if someone is in a space where someone very close to them is very actively negative on this, that is really challenging. That is not an enviable position. And if you're in that position, uh, it's, it's hard. There's no way around it. And Yeah, coaching questions, going in there, design the alliance, looking at you know what's real, not real, uh, all of those things. It's heroic work. From a pure practical standpoint, one of the things I'm, I am most proud of, and I feel is is extremely important, is the connections with other members in the, the coaching community who are up to similar things uh, to form almost like a a daily check in with people. You know, and, you know, every day at two o'clock, I'm going to check in to, to look at my progress and say what I need to do. And, uh, you know, group of three, uh, find and build that support network mindfully, knowing that if you do that, your resilience will increase. I'm in the lucky position that uh, Amois and I, we 
uh, you know, we feel like we've been on the same page for this whole thing. And it feels, it's always felt easy. Like this is the thing to do. We never really had a plan B. And we, yeah, you know, of course things have to shift and change through this process, but, uh, but I've had, you know, family members, friends think that we were out of our minds. <laughs> you know? <laughs> what, what is coaching? That's not going to work. Um, and I've had mountain biking buddies, uh, you know, buddies in Portland and things like that who have always dreamt of doing something, but uh, their spouse did not want them to. And their partner said, no, like you need to not, I'm not comfortable taking that risk. And they never did. They, they stayed at their jobs and they're still at their jobs. Uh, that's hard. It's, it's a hard, it feels like a very adult type of conversations, decisions to make things like that. I really love what you're saying about um, surrounding yourself with support and connections, though. Mm -hmm. I think that's really, really important, and especially if you are, it can be very lonely, can't it, launching a business on your own, right. and you have people around you who probably are not ill-intended. They actually care for you, and they, they probably want the best for you, and thinking, and it's not their values, or their map of the world, you know, their values are probably, I don't know, being in a corporate career or whatever it is, nine to five. So I think that's what's been really important for me as well. And why it's really important for me to continue to be part of coach training EDU, because mm -hmm. you do get inspired and you can have conversations. And I think if you're part of a community and a network, or you have a coach or you have a, a mentor who's in a coaching field, you can at least run those fears by and, and share stories, can't you? Right. You know, and it's, it, it really does it coaching in, so in general, like when you're meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients, the, the depth and level of connection there is so intense. It was so fulfilling that your first handful of clients, when you're working with them, the sessions themselves are fulfilling. Like they provide meaning. Uh, I remember feeling like I, even bad sessions, I still felt like I was changing the world and helping students on a one-to-one -one level and then helping executives and you know make some really big decisions, decisions that was going to have uh, an impact on the direction of or whole organizations. That's our impact, that's meaningful. And those conversations are deeply fulfilling. And they helped me feel not so lonely because they were just amazing. I mean, just like, wow, that was a human to human connection. Wow. Uh, and, and when you're grinding admin, website, marketing, uh, all that, you know, one, you know, you and a computer type of work, it's lonelier than anything. And you, it, we need people. So, uh, yeah, I think it's part of a strategic plan to have, to find ways to have supportive people in your life. It's not just a nice thing, it's a strategic thing to do in establishing yourself as a coach.